Hello, everyone. This is Dan again with Forex Boat Trading Academy. Today's YouTube video tutorial is going to cover fundamental versus technical analysis. Which one? Now, this has been a debate that has raged in the trading community for years. Uh, I alone, in the past 20 years, have had this conversation countless times uh, with colleagues, traders, analysts. And really, it's understandable why this topic comes up as much as it does. Uh, because every day, really, in the market as traders, we have to grapple with uh, the dilemma of whether we're going to prioritize you know, news events, uh, such as economic data that comes out on the calendar, uh, whether we're going to prioritize interest rates and the movement of interest rates around the world. You know, how, where does that rank compared to you know, what I'm reading on the charts, for example? And this is the core of the debate because as traders, we have no choice really but to prioritize the information that we're being fed in one way or the other and make decisions based on certain pieces of information and that are that we alone are going to ultimately rank higher than other pieces of information because we are the ones pulling the trigger on each of our trades. So we're really going to look closely at these four topics. And then by the end of the webinar, we should be able to have a better look at where we stand with each of these things. So starting with interest rates and capital flows, what are we talking about here? Well, basically, uh, as we know, every major country around the world has a central bank. And based on the health of the economy at any point in time, that central bank can consider engaging in monetary policy. And the core form that monetary policy typically takes is the raising or lowering of the target interest rate in that country. So we've seen, for example, recently, the Federal Reserve Bank in the US has actively engaged in the cutting of interest rates actually, you know, here in early 2020, not very long after raising interest rates in 2019. So that's actually a very astounding example of how a central bank engaged in one, uh, you know, one maneuver of essentially raising rates you know, this is at a time when the stock market, the, the U.S. Dow Jones, the S&P 500, was reaching all-time highs. Uh, currencies, commodity currencies, particularly like the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, were really outperforming the U.S. dollar, and it was a very risk-on market, as you might say. Boy, how things can really change in just a couple of months, right? Uh, the coronavirus actually had an impact here, obviously. Uh, but it was it goes to show you how quickly interest rates can change in an environment where a central bank deems that it's necessary. And so I think what this tells us on the fundamental side is that fundamentals are important. But if you were a trader, especially in today's environment that was basing your trades strictly on what interest rates are doing, you really would have to be careful because going through the end of 2019, interest rates using the U.S. as an example were on the rise. Uh, and that might lead you to believe that uh, the U.S. dollar would be continued to strengthen. And in reality, that is not what was happening. Actually, the dollar was falling. So in an interest rate rising environment, the argument for why a currency will strengthen is because it will attract capital to that country. If that interest rate is expected to be higher or outperform another major country, let's say another major G G10 country around the world, then you would expect money to flow. Let's use a let's use an example like Europe, where you know interest rates are have been essentially negative, so or just below zero. So you would expect as interest rates rise in the U.S., capital to flow from Europe to the United States and move into certain U.S. assets. So if, if somebody's buying treasury bonds, for example, from Europe or corporate bonds, right? What's happening? First of all, they're exchanging their euros into dollars to buy those assets. So they're selling euros and they're buying dollars. And this is creating a demand, an increased demand for dollars and a reduced demand for euros. And that's basically the interest rate capital flow story, right? And uh, you know, this goes back to just economics 101. And so, but we have to be careful because how many times have traders have we discovered the way things are supposed to work aren't the way they always do work in the financial markets, right? The, the market can remain irrational longer than we could remain solvent, right? Using Maynard Keynes quote. And so that's 
you know, that's a, a point where with fundamentals, it's good for us to understand the backdrop. I think interest rates and capital flows more than anything teach us that it's good to understand the backdrop of what can drive the value of a currency over the long term. However, in the very short term, which most traders I find are more short term in nature with the ability to get in and out of trade so quickly these days, I find the majority of traders are much more short term. And so you have to be careful if you're a short, if you find yourself being a short term trader, how much weight you put into fundamental analysis. You know, there's also the expression, which is worth raising quickly, is buy the rumor, sell the news. And we're going to talk about news events briefly. But a lot of times traders sometimes are surprised when, uh, for example, if the U.S. cuts interest rates on a particular day and time, all of a sudden the dollar strengthens in that in that instant, right? Well, this is there's a classic expression in the market that says buy the rumor, sell the news, because if they cut interest rates, Right. If the U.S. Fed cut interest, cuts interest rates, let's say today at a certain time, the expectation is that the U.S. dollar would fall. Right. Why? Because it falls. That would fall in line with our interest rate and capital flow story that I just outlined. But what do we see happen so often? What we see happen so often is the market actually does the opposite of what the traditional fundamental story is telling us that it should do. Right. And that's where the expression by the rumor sell the news came into play you know that's a tutorial for another day but it goes to show you that with fundamentals okay uh, particularly this interest rate and capital flow story you really need to be a little bit careful and watchful of your of what you're looking at first of all and how much weight you're giving it based on the time period you're looking to hold your trade shorter term traders which so many are these days, really need to be careful by, by about putting too much weight into fundamentals. And now that takes us to our next point, which discusses the technical side a little bit. Precision of indicators and price action, right? This has become, you know, now in 2020, just over the past 10 years, I would say, and I've been in the markets now for twice as long as that, 20 years. In the past 10 years, there has been an explosion of, uh, indicators and capabilities that we now have on charts and that's a great thing right you know there's uh, you know some would say the more indicators the more capabilities on the chart the better um, and I actually for the most part would agree with that as long as you can uh, decipher what indicators and what forms of analysis are appropriate to perform at at, at which times as well as not zooming in too closely. So when we talked about the fundamental side with interest rates and capital flows, we talked about where you could run into some pitfalls with that. And with indicators and price action analysis on the technical side, I think it would be wise to do the same. You know, where can we run into pitfalls with using indicators and price action analysis? My view is, is that when you zoom in too closely, right? Because these charts are so powerful, right? They allow us to do so much. If I want to look at a 15 minute chart, a five minute chart, a one minute chart, a tick chart, I can zoom in as close as I possibly can to, to try to gain an edge. But in reality, if I start zooming in too closely on charts, I, I find, in fact, you're not giving yourself an edge. You're doing the opposite. You're actually trying to find something that can ultimately trigger you to get into a trade at what, what might be an unfavorable price or unfavorable timing, right? A big expression with trading is that it's the combination of, fi of finding a good price at a good time, right? If we simplify it down to, I'm trying to find a good price at a good time, both on my entry and on my exit. And so technical analysis is a powerful tool if used appropriately. And so as you know, in more tutorials, you'll likely see we're often using four hour charts, daily charts, weekly charts, sometimes one hour charts, but very rarely are we are we drilling or zooming in much more closely than a one hour chart. Perhaps a 15 or 30 minute chart can add value for trying to time the entry as, you know, as precisely as you can, but it's definitely not obligatory. It's not required to uh, pull the trigger on a trade. And so, you know, we're going to touch upon in the last part of our technical analysis discussion in a little bit, 
why? You know, why is it important that I be looking at a certain type of chart at a certain time? You know, why is that fundamental, or should I say, uh, very critical to technical analysis? We're going to talk about that. But without a doubt, you know, you are with the charts we have today. You know, it's like harnessing a powerful horse that's trying to take you somewhere. The indicators and price action analysis is an extremely powerful tool. You know, there are some great technicians going back to the 1980s, you know, who will tell you back then when they had to, uh, you know, they perform technical analysis, they didn't have, you know, online charts. They had to do it, you know, basically by hand. If, and it's really interesting if you, you know, uh, in a, another tutorial we can cover this, but there's some, tr some very famous traders who are managing millions of dollars and performing technical analysis essentially by hand. Uh, and so it shows you even then uh, how it was even identified at that time that technical analysis had important value. And so now as we get in, you know, further and further uh, you know, into the 21st century and you know, we're guaranteed to see these charts just become more and more sophisticated, you know, we have to take the good with the bad and we have to make sure that we don't uh, paralyze ourselves with so much analysis that really the most critical pieces of analysis are not shining through. We have to make sure that we're seeing the, 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 the critical price action that we need. So that's a little bit on the technical side. Flipping back to fundamentals just for a minute, because I think what many traders are discovering, particularly in this environment that we're in right now, here in 2020, is that the market can do funny things, right? And a lot of times our expectations uh, which is always so dangerous to have as a trader is expectations. The market can sometimes betray our expectations, uh, which on the fundamental side calls into question, well, why did we have such expectations in the first place, right? Because as traders, we always need to account for risk, right? You know, a lot of traders in the markets, rightfully so, have aspirations of, you know, moving from being a personal trader, perhaps trading a smaller account, trading more professionally, trading larger amounts of their own capital later on. And then who knows, you know, where that road can take you to becoming a money manager at some point, perhaps, uh, you know, and beyond. I mean, really, the, the sky is the limit with trading. I think that's why it excites so many people. And so on the fundamental side, what you need to look at is, you know, I I've been talking to some very close colleagues in the industry and a lot of traders in the past few weeks here as we get closer to June 2020 and watching what the, the US stock market has done, right? Uh, unfortunately, there's been a severe downturn uh, in the US economy uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, in the, on the jobs front in particular related to the coronavirus. But to some, surprisingly, the US stock market has been you know, quite resilient. Uh, it's really uh, done well. Uh, and has continued to have consecutive up days for a while now. Uh, and, you know, everybody's waiting for this big downturn. But the question is, is why does that downturn necessarily have to happen? It kind of comes back to the expectation uh, part of trading as a fundamental trader. And this is the risk. You know, another risk of fundamentals is that thinking that something, because one thing happened, the reaction in the market has to be a foregone conclusion, right? And a contrarian trader, for those of you who are new to the term contrarian, a contrarian trader is someone who uh, always looks at what might be obvious with a skeptical eye, right? And always accounts for the possibility that what the majority of traders think might happen, the market will actually do the exact opposite, according to a contrarian. A contrarian is always looking at not what the herd or the majority of traders will do, they'll always look at what the minority will do. And in fact, you know, certain contrarian traders will try to look at certain types of data, like uh, the ratios of long to short traders uh, to get this type of information. And bear in mind, that's fundamental analysis, actually. So, you know, we always use the Forex Factory charts here. I'm going to pull them up clear, excuse me, Forex Factory economic calendar, which I'm going to pull up here quickly, you know, and I use this every week. You know, I come to this at the beginning of the week on Sunday before the market, before the market opens, because it's important to have a grasp of what's coming out, because 
news events are market moving, especially you know more more significant news events are market moving. So whether I'm a almost exclusively a technical trader and it means that I'm going to stay out of the market when a certain news event comes out, or whether it means <clears throat> I'm going to try to take a contrarian approach um, to a to a particular news event. So that goes back to the topic of buy the rumors, sell the news. Uh, whatever it means, you know, it's important to have an idea week in and week out of what's coming out on the economic calendar so that you can prepare. You know, many traders tend to gravitate to the same instruments over and over. Not every trader, you know, I've seen traders who will trade basically anything, but there are traders who stick to a certain set, call it three to five instruments that they primarily trade. And so in those scenarios, coming to the economic calendar every week is good because it helps you identify what you meet, need to watch out for on the fundamental side. You know, technical traders, I know people that use almost entirely technicals and they still come to the economic calendar because they want to know what news event might impact a technical trade they've been holding, let's say for a period of days or a period of weeks. And it might help them determine, okay, perhaps I should exit this trade uh, before a certain news event comes out. So the economic calendar can be a really valuable tool for every type of trader, regardless of whether you're primarily technical or not. And so getting back to our presentation here, trading news like a contrarian trader. So if you are, you know, this to me is one of the, the stronger arguments for incorporating fundamental analysis into your trading because, you know, you're doing it in a way that, at least in today's market environment, has proven to be very fruitful, right? It's proven to be very fruitful. You know, another argument for looking at currencies quickly is, you know, what the US dollar has done, right? I can't tell you, basically since I've, since I've joined this industry almost 20 years ago, uh, I've heard the same argument for 20 years as to why the US dollar is going to crash. You know, the US is carrying so much debt, right? And it just continues to grow and grow, uh, eventually, this will be the undoing of the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is going to unravel completely because the U.S. just can't continue to carry this much debt, and it's going to show itself in the value of the dollar. Uh, if I could tell you how many times I've heard that over the past 20 years, I've heard I heard it 15 years ago, I heard it 10 years ago, I heard it five years ago. You still hear it today. Uh, but guess what? The dollar has continued to remain resilient for the most part. It appears that it continues to remain the most chosen safe haven asset. And so a contrarian trader who continues to follow the dollar in times of flights to safety uh, has done pretty well. And so just keep that thought in mind of trading as a contrarian. That might be different from one trader to another, depending upon what instruments they like to trade. But I think it might be helpful to you to keep that approach in mind when looking at fundamentals. Think back to charts. So chart reading and strength in numbers. Well, what do we mean by that? So <clears throat> a common expression that you'll hear when it comes to technical analysis is that technical analysis is a study of self-fulfilling prophecies, right? What does that mean? Basically what it means, and this goes back to what I said earlier about time frames on charts, right? So if I'm a technical trader and it's the beginning of the week and I'm pulling up, you know, Euro US dollar and I'm looking at the weekly chart, you know, a, what it means to say that um, this is a study of self-fulfilling prophecies comes down to basically what is my level of confidence that the chart that I'm looking at here at the beginning of the week, the weekly chart of Euro US dollar, what is my level of confidence that other traders are also looking at this same chart? Because ultimately the idea is, is that I'm putting some sort of faith in the fact that trading decisions that I'm making based on this chart that I'm looking at, other traders of significance, whether they're traders at banks, traders at hedge funds, uh, individual high net worth traders, and then the whole gamut, whole slew of retail traders around the world, I'm putting some faith that those whole, those, those, that wide range of traders are also looking at the same chart that I'm looking at. The, the, the premise behind technical analysis working basically hinges upon that being true to some extent. And when I say to some extent, it means 
if I start looking at every chart that I possibly can, if I start zooming in on, you know, let's use the same example, Euro, US dollar, it's the beginning of the week. Tomorrow's Monday and I'm getting ready to see what my approach might be for the next five days. If I zoom into a five minute chart on Euro, US dollar on Sunday, it, am I going to have the same level of confidence that I'm looking at a chart that other traders around the world of all types are looking at? Am I going to have the same level of confidence that they're looking at a five minute chart versus a weekly? Of course not, right? Because a five minute chart is so zoomed in, there aren't traders making those same decisions. And ultimately, it's, you know, the term order flow. Order flow is going to dictate what the market does, right? The, the ratio of buyers to sellers at any moment in time. And so I want to be making sure that I'm on a technical way, in a technical way on charts, looking at information that I have the highest level of confidence that I possibly can, that I'm looking at charts that other traders are also looking at. And that's what it means to be a study of self-fulfilling prophecies. That's a good thing, right? Because now I'm going to apply my indicators on this particular chart. I'm going to perform my price action analysis, whether I'm looking for, you know, just to use some terms, a double doji, you know, reversal, you know, whether I'm looking for a certain Fibonacci retracement level to be hit on, the, you know, or what have you. I need to make sure that I'm looking at a time frame that is significant, right? Because ultimately, when the market does what it's going to do, how often is it that weeks later or a month later, we go back and look at that weekly chart or that daily chart and say, wow, had I seen that, had I seen that particular uh, Japanese candlestick formation, or had I seen that key Fibonacci level, you know, showing strong support, you know, I would have taken such and such action, right? And so, Technical analysis is powerful. You know, back testing, you know, back, you know, the term back testing and performing back testing has become so, you know, so popular because technically, you know, in hindsight, we can see how powerful technical analysis is. And so we need to respect how to use it, right? We need to respect what it can do for us and not become starry eyed or have too strong expectations expect to do things that are not realistic we can't we can't do that and that's where i think sometimes myself included over the past you know you know years where traders can sometimes run into trouble with technical analysis where they think it can achieve certain things that it's really not intended to achieve and that's part of that is because of the power of the charts that we have today here in 2020 you know that 1980s trader the 1985 trader you know, something, it's kind of like, be careful what you wish for, because they didn't have the same strength of charts. They had to use a much more simplistic way of charting and a much more simplistic way of performing a technical analysis. But hey, that might have actually turned out to be the best thing for them because they had to focus on the big picture for the most part. And so we're wrapping up here in comparing technicals and fundamentals. We've, we've highlighted, you know, the strengths of both and where we can run into perhaps some pitfalls with both. And so if we had to perform some type of final analysis here, okay, and had to really think about uh, what type of analysis is better, if we want to use that term, okay, I would phrase it as it's not one over the other, okay? I think today's tutorial hopefully highlighted the capabilities of both forms of analysis. Uh, how I would phrase it is, I would aim to be a master technical analyst and never lose sight of the fundamentals, okay? Uh, the better that you become at chart reading, the better that you become at analyzing charts, which takes time, you know, it does take time, it takes experience, uh, the more confident you'll be on placing trades off of charts. And perhaps the majority of the trades that you wind up taking are based on the charts. Uh, However, fundamentals will always be in the picture, even if it's just the big picture. Week to week, we're gonna have economic data events. We have that Forex factory calendar up there for a reason. There's, it never stops, right? There's always new news events coming out of greater or lesser significance. There's always central bank interest rates changes happening. And so we have to keep our eye on the fundamentals. We can't discard them. And sometimes if we take a contrarian approach, we can even make really big money, right? So 
uh, you know, Warren Buffett or and George Soros like to comment that uh, they look for asymmetric market opportunities, right? Brexit was a good example of an asymmetric fundamental market opportunity where if you acted as a contrarian during uh, Brexit, right, and basically looked for the possibility that the vote would go towards Brexit, that was a contrarian approach that offered a lot of reward uh, compared to the risk. And so just to finish with one, one last look at that fundamental side and why it's important. So with that, we're gonna wrap it up for today's tutorial. You could please remember to follow the Forex Vote YouTube channel. You'll find more great content on there covering a whole wide range of topics, a lot of different tutorials. And of course, we will be back with you soon with an upcoming tutorial. So for everybody here at Forex Boat, wish you a great rest of the week, and we look forward to chatting with you soon. Have a great rest of the day. Take care.